To intervene is to take an action to meet a specific goal or address a problem. Upper elementary math intervention should be targeted math instruction determined by data and observation in a way that is most relevant to student needs. Welcome to episode 36 of the Upper Elementary Simplified podcast. Today's episode is part eight of our nine part series about upper elementary guided math, and we're going to be discussing targeted intervention to math skills. Welcome to Upper Elementary Simplified, the podcast where busy and overwhelmed teachers find thoughtful ideas to get students engaged in meaningful learning experiences. Hi, I'm Dana Rodebush, former fifth grade classroom teacher and founder of Teacher Tech Studio. I'm here to share practical tips and strategies that will help you grow as an educator. If you are a tired upper elementary teacher searching for ways to cut down your planning time while boosting student engagement, you are in the right spot. Are you ready? Let's simplify. This nine part series of Upper Elementary Simplified is sponsored by the Ultimate Guide to Guided Math for Upper Elementary Teachers. This free guide includes 43 pages of practical and useful tips for you to learn about guided math, including how to implement this powerful instructional strategy in your upper elementary classroom. Download your copy of this free resource by heading to teachertechstudio.com forward slash guided math book. That link will be in the show notes. Second only to the instruction itself is the use of targeted instruction. This means that as the teacher, you are providing multiple means of assessment and observation to drive your instruction in a way that is the most relevant to your students' needs. Upper elementary math intervention is an important factor in this targeted instruction. To be able to provide targeted intervention, we first need to assess skill mastery. When I was in the classroom, I had my students complete what I called skill checks. These were typically a quick four question assessment that I would directly observe students in small groups of about three to four as they worked through. I wanted to be sure that I was watching them as they worked so that I could see if they had misconceptions. I would always remind them that these skill checks were low pressure and not for a grade, but they were for me to see what they know and what they still need practice with. The results of this assessment should provide you with data noting which of your students have mastered the skill, which of your students are getting there, and which of them require some form of intervention exposure to the skill. Math intervention can be in the form of a whole group reteaching of a skill, a small group, or one-on-one intervention lesson. So if the majority of your students are still struggling with the skill or concept, it is a good idea to provide them with intervention during a whole group lesson where you reteach the skill. However, if you have a minority of students who have been identified as needing intervention or a further targeted exposure to the skill, you can provide them with intervention in one of two ways. For students who require your undivided attention to obtain progress toward mastering a math skill, you can provide one-on-one focused intervention. And then for students who each require extra practice with the same skill and will benefit from interacting with their peers as they work towards mastery, you can provide small group intervention to groups of no more than four students. There are three main goals to targeted math intervention, skill mastery, student independence, and student confidence. The main goal for math intervention is obviously for the students involved to master the target skill and become independent learners. Aside from these goals, the opportunity to work one-on-one with you or in a small group of peers developing their math skills allows students to gain confidence in their abilities as math learners. So when can you provide intervention? You can use the time while students are working on a real world application activity or task that we discussed in last week's episode. You can build in time during other parts of your day, maybe while students are working independently on another subject. 
I've even gotten special permission from parents for students to come in and eat lunch with me and miss a little part of recess to work on some extra practice. So just a quick recap of my suggested weekly schedule for upper elementary guided math. Day one, introduce the new math skill, provide time for practice, and an exit ticket. Day two, use exit ticket data to review the skill and provide more practice time. Days three and four, teach small group lessons while other students are working independently and at math centers. And day five, assess students with a quick quiz, provide a real world application task, and make time for targeted intervention. Next Tuesday, we will wrap up our series with an episode about spiral review. Be sure to download your free guide so you have all of the information in one place to reference. Find it at UpperElementarySimplified.com forward slash episode 36. I hope to see you back here next week. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Upper Elementary Simplified. I hope you are able to take away something useful that will help you grow as a teacher. I do have a quick favor to ask before you go. If you are enjoying the podcast, please let me know by leaving me a review. It really does make a difference because reviews impact search results, which helps me to expand my reach to other educators. Plus, I love to read my listeners' comments. Until next time, keep life simple.